Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've found the equation, the differential equation using the Lagrangian, we're now going to find the equations of motion for velocity as a function of time and position as a, fun as a function of time along the incline and also along the vertical distance. And then we're going to find the time it takes to get to the bottom, both along this path and along this path, and those two times better be the same as to check to see if we got the equations correct. So we ended up with this equation right here, and then we have to realize that x double dot, well, that can be written as dv dt. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, and instead of having x double dot, we're going to write it as dv dt is equal to g times the sine of theta. Now g and theta are both constants, so we bring the dt over the other side, so we have dv is equal to g sine of theta times dt, and we're going to integrate both sides. So that means that the velocity as a function of time is going to be g sine of theta times t, plus a constant of integration, which in this case is going to be the original or the initial velocity at the very top. Assuming that v initial is equal to zero, let's assume that v initial equal to zero, so this goes to zero, that means that this is now our equation uh, along the incline, the velocity as a function of time. Now what we can say is that v is equal to dx dt, and that is equal to g times the sine of theta times t, and then we bring the dt over to the other side, and then we integrate both sides, well I guess I have to integrate across the t also, like this, and we integrate around the dx. So now we can say that x is a function of time. Remember that x is the distance along the incline. x equals 0 up here and increases as it goes down. And that will be equal to g sine of theta times t squared divided by 2. And of course, plus x sub naught, the original position. And again, if we assume that x sub naught equals 0, because we start at the very top, then this goes to zero as well, and now we have our two equations, the velocity as a function of time and the position as a function of time along the incline. So that's what that differential equation allows us to find. So now what we want to do is we want to find the velocity as a function of time or a position as a function of time coming down straight out here. We want to get this portion of the velocity and let's see how do we do that. Well, we can do this. We can say that y as a function of time, now we're looking at the vertical distance, is equal to y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half, actually, will it be plus or will it be minus? If I think of that being positive and then zero at the bottom, then what I can do is I can say, well, then this becomes a minus one half uh, times acceleration in the y direction times t squared. So in this case, I have an initial height that's positive, initial velocity potentially positive, and then I have a negative acceleration on the way down, assuming that a will be expressed as a positive value. So we can then say that y is a function of time is equal to the initial height will be h, we could say maybe h plus r or h, if we take the initial height as being that position right there, we'll simply call it h, uh, plus zero because there's no velocity initially in the, in the uh, y direction, and then the acceleration in the y direction. Now notice we have the acceleration in terms of, right here, notice we have the acceleration is equal to g sine theta, and that's acceleration in the x direction. So how do we then find the acceleration in the y direction? All right. Acceleration in the y direction would be acceleration in the x direction times the sine of the angle. So that means that a in the y direction equals g sine theta times sine of theta, which means that sine of theta squared. So that can go in here. So we have minus one half. The acceleration in the y direction will be equal to g times the sine square of theta times t squared. And I guess that's all I need there for this equation right here. So now I have an equation that gives me position as a function of time. Now the next thing I want to do is find the time to the bottom, assuming that the height is 4.9 meters, 
and the angle is 30 degrees. So first, let's do it along the incline. So along the incline, I can say that the time can be found by using this equation right here. So I can then say that x sub t, now how long is x sub t? Uh, when I get all the way down to the bottom, that would be twice the height. Since the angle is 30 degrees, x sub t would be 2 times the height, or 9.8 meters. So in this case, I have 9.8 meters which is the full distance when I go from here to here, what will be my time when I reach the bottom? If this is 4.9 meters, then this is 9.8 meters because the angle is 30 degrees. So I have 9.8 meters, I don't need to write meters, I'll put 9.8, is equal to 1 half times 9.8 times the sine of 30, which is 1 half, times t squared. In other words, t is going to be equal to the square root of, this is 1 half, this is 1 half, that would be, uh, well, let me write it one more time, otherwise we're going to get confused and that would not be a good thing. Well, first of all, I can get rid of the 9.8 on both sides, so let's do that. So we have 1 is equal to 1 quarter times t squared, because the sine of 30 is 1 half, times 1 half is 1 quarter, t squared equals 1, so therefore I can say that t squared is equal to 4, or t is equal to 2 seconds. So along the incline, it takes 2 seconds for the object to come down. Now let's see if I got a correct equation here by calculating the time to come down via this direction. So along the, uh, along the vertical, like this. Okay, I have y, which is the full height, so when I come down to the bottom, I'm at 0, so I get 0 is equal to the initial height, which is 4.9, because that was given right here, and then uh, minus 1 half, minus 1 half times g, which is 9.8, times the sine square of theta, the sine of theta is 1 half, so the sine squared would be 1 half quantity squared, and then times t squared. All right, so that gives me, when I bring this across, and I get negatives on both sides, I get 4.9 is equal to 1 half times 1 quarter, which is 1 eight times 9.8 times t squared. And so I can then say that 8 times 4.9, or 4.9 and 9.8, that becomes 1, and this becomes 2, which is 1 quarter, or 4 equals t squared, which means that t is equal to the square root of 4, which is 2 seconds. And you can see that I get the same amount of time for the object to come down this side as it comes down this side, and both of them take 2 seconds, which means that the equation I got over here matches the equation that I got over here. This is the equation for the position as the function of time along the incline. This is the equation that I have for the position along the vertical distance. So both seem to give me the very same time to get to the bottom, and that is how it's done.